we're here. <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you great. How you doing? Oh, awesome. How are you? I'm good. I am That's so excited. So <laughs> Likewise. Let's get to it. Oh, let's get to it. So today we are talking to Miriam A. Hyman, aka Robin Hood. Hey. Oh my goodness, this is great. Like, <laughs> hey, what's up? I want to get right into the music because I absolutely love music. I feel like it is like my whole body and soul. Like that was my therapy before I went to go see a therapist. So I want to like I jump into it. that. I love um, it. Your it. album, you know how we always, with books, For I'm a good book reader, right? So a lot of times when I'm looking at books, I always look at the chapters and I read the title of it before I even go into it. I already have my own perception, right? So right. when you look at the cover, you're like, alter ego. Hmm. <laughs> Does this person have like another whole person embodied in one person, right? And then I open it up, right? I open up the inside, and there's this one song that I have probably listened to, I don't know how many times. It's titled Monk Flow. Woo! My that, producer, Easto, will be very pleased. Well, <laughs> shout out to your producer. I absolutely love producers. We'll talk about that before we get off. Okay, but cool. yes, so I listened to it, and then, I don't know, it already had captured me because... Years ago, um, in New York City, I used to go to the meditation centers all the time. So it brought me there. It literally brought me into the meditation center. I'm on the pillow, and we are getting ready to chant. We're getting ready to, like, really clear our minds. And that's where you took me. So I'm there, right? And then I start listening as you add your lyrics to it, and then it takes me home. It mm. takes me back to the struggle. Yeah. It takes me back to some places that... I didn't been really visited in a while and maybe I needed to take a step back because sometimes you can reach a certain whatever it is in life. And it's not that you forget about those that you left behind. It's just that you're so busy trying to continue to create and create. And it's like, look, I may not be calling you on the phone, but I'm showing you, you could do it too. I'm That's, out here. Let's get it. Yes, I indeed. got that out of that <laughs> song, right? And I was like, wow, this is so dope. I love listening to music that takes me to a place I need to take to a place, a time. I need to travel. Mm -hmm. If your music isn't taking me anywhere, I can't listen to it because I need you to help me navigate through this right. life, this right. journey that we're going right. through, right? And, you know, going from that song, th the chanting, I felt the meditation, and then it took me to places where I just wanted, I, I felt like I was a soldier. Like <laughs> psychological, like... no, seriously, psycho. Because I, I, I really embody music and I really listen to it. I work. I, I started it. working with Grammy-winning producer Focus, so I listen to music in a totally different ear, yeah. and I really take it in because I was like, wow, I got sound. That's great. You know what I mean? You hear the sound before you even before it even translates to the language, right? Exactly, exactly. So, so I'm listening to the sound, and then it gives me an amazing frequency because now it already puts me in a place of an open mind. Because when you listen, when you think about meditation, it opens you, it frees you, okay. and it took me there, right? So I'm already open, I'm ready, and I'm listening, but now it's telling me to get up. You see me, I'm here. I'm yeah. doing it. You can yeah. do it too. I'm going yeah. up and they still stuck. What? Come on with the lyrics. Let's get it. I was like, yes. And then we hear, what is the other one? Kamazi? Kamikaze. Kamikaze. Yeah. Yes. I apologize. Yes. So then that was another one. I was like, exactly. What are you, what are you, what are we doing here? And I then mean, George. Yeah, George. brother George. Brother George, yeah. Brother George, it just didn't make me think of George Floyd. It made me think of my daughter's father who was gunned down in Cleveland, Ohio at the age of 24, right? Sorry. And then working as an EMT for 15 years and watching us go and body, Ooh. putting us in body bags, right? Come on, come on. Yo, you, you're giving me so much life right now. Like, I just <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it took me, I, I just have to... We have 30 minutes, and I'm going to make sure that I make the best of this 30 minutes because you have given me the most expensive gift that anybody can ever give me, and that is your time. And I don't take these conversations lightly. These are, this is something that I decided to do so I can keep my mind, so that I don't lose my mind because I'm right. a human at the end of the day. Forget all that TV and all the celebrity and all of that stuff. At the end of the day, I'm a human, 
and I understand that there are humans that are going through things way worse than I am. Most so definitely. how about I lift myself up, bring some amazing people in here and just have a really dope conversation. I don't want this to ever sound like an interview. I'm tired of interviews. Honestly, <laughs> I want to, I want to collaborate. I want to vibe. I want to have that energy where we have connect. Yes. Absolutely. Where somebody yes. can actually get something out of this so they can feel when you being real, then you can make change. That's exactly when you can make change. And I say all that to say that I manifest this. Okay. This conversation, I definitely manifest that because I know I did because I watched I watched yeah. The Shy, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought your character was so dope. I'm going to be flip-flop in oh. front of music to, you know, oh, you, you it's, creative. It's, okay, you with me, It's though. all good. It's all okay. Good. I was only going to say to people who haven't heard the EP just yet, because you've been talking all about all this amazing music. Right. The link is in my bio. It's on all dope. platforms. Alter Ego. Go get that. Okay. No, okay. definitely, definitely <laughs> go and get that because sometimes you know it is definitely important. I think mental health is important, and people should definitely go out and get it. You know, if you need that extra help and that place where you can feel safe and nobody's gonna go and tell somebody go and get it. But if you can't get there right now, I definitely, I definitely uh, recommend that you go and get that that oh, alter yeah. ego. They don't Seriously, even have to leave the house for that. You, you don't, don't even gotta leave. Spotify. <laughs> We quarant I'm quarantined at home. We at home, hey, so you don't got been, nothing. We've been, quarantined. Time. we've been quarantined for eight months now. I don't even know what day it is. I just showed up. <laughs> exactly. I got, I got a message from my assistant, like, you got a live. I'm like, okay, I'm here. Like, I, I don't Right know. here, right? <laughs> But yeah, so you were, you, um, you oh, yeah, so back to the, yeah, so I started watching The Shy. I wasn't watching it on the days that it premiered because I'm a, I, I'm a very busy little individual, oh, but yeah. I was binging on it, right? And then it got to, uh, once we got, I don't know, like season three, I was like, hmm, okay, right? I'm like, switching you know, some right. things up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're switching yeah. some things up, but the way that you, uh, depict the character was just so amazing. I felt like you absolutely breathed the words right off the page. Thank and you. I connected oh with your I connected with your character the most because it was like no matter what was going on in the household, you was just like real chill, like babe, I got you. I'm right here. I'm cool. Everybody need one of those. Come on, <laughs> you know nobody needs to be falling when we going through something. One of us gotta hold each other up. I had to bring my Philly swag to the shy a little bit, you know. Oh, you brought it. And that's probably why it made it so alive because you brought a part of you into oh, it. And that God. is the most beautiful thing that you could ever do. So I was connected and I was zoomed in. Even when you left the house, you was cool with that. You got your bag. You know, normally people, you, I've seen people in the hood that are leaving. They, they're like, Wait, where you going? No. Oh, really? You don't care about me? You gonna just leave and be like, but you just said that you want me to leave, though. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Look, 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 look. I've seen situations where, like, when she threw the bag at me and the dildo, you had people throwing it back. Like, it could have <laughs> turned into a really crazy um, alter, um, excuse me, altercation. But basically, you know, I think two things that you said very important to me um first of yeah. all you mentioned that you know I just kind of breathe life you know right into the words on the page and I just think that that's so amazing because my whole focus in terms of just this work and just like life my mantra is just breathe and believe you know and in that yeah. way anything that I come up against you know I'm going to be able to get through this and I, I don't just completely you know just rely on myself I truly believe that there's a higher power you know, oh, hence man. my song, God's Grace, you know, mm -hmm. that's also on the EP. You know, I try to give them a little bit of everything, you know, a little gospel, <laughs> a little, you know. Um, but that's but life, though. You're giving them life. And that brings <laughs> me to my next point. So with the breathing and believing in terms of, like, the acting, it doesn't matter how much training you have or how much training you have not had, how many experiences you have and haven't had. If you can just get up there and talk and listen with those other players that yeah. are in the scene with you, you're living. We're not acting no more. It's, it's no different than if a camera, Real life. If, if this was recorded, you know, we're not being like self-conscious about anything. We're just talking. I'm hearing you. You're hearing me. It's a dialogue, a conversation, something that we just need to get back to more. I think just like within, you know, this country and globally, we just need to, we just need to have two Oh, we need to bring, like, no, no, you know? seriously. We need to bring back, <laughs> trust and believe. My grandmother raised me, right? 
And what yeah. we used to do is, is in the morning time, we would have a cup of coffee. I had like a teaspoon. I was like five years old. And we wow. would be at the table in the morning and we would just be talking. And That's that beautiful. is why I have survived. I'm, a, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. And okay. I now live here on the East Coast. I'm currently in Connecticut. And I used to, let, you know, like, okay. go and do work in New York and then you come know, home. You know, I know Connecticut a little bit. I went to Yale, so, you know, I spent some time. I, yeah, let, let's bring that up a little bit. Wow, Yale school drama. What? <laughs> you know. <laughs> this cup say, be the girl who decided to do it. And you you just did I like, it. I like that cup. I might you have like my it? Address. It's it's so cute, right? It's so mm. cute. I love it. You know, um, I've never been a coffee drinker, but I love tea. And I like tea, too. So I, I'm a tea girl. You know, I like to get up in the morning and have my tea and everything and just kind of look out the window and just gaze and just just be easy, you know, because right now it is really crazy times. And honestly, the shy for these last 10 weeks have really gotten me through. I might have to watch it for the next 10 weeks so you can get me through another 10 weeks. Right. But, exactly. Um, it was very, you know, we talk about therapy. Uh, uh, well, my character anyway tries to introduce mm -hmm. that, you know, once Ke we, you know, we find Keisha, Keisha's brought back home. And I just feel like having that tea, sitting by the window, you know, taking in nature, it goes back to like that, that the basic principles that we need just like uh -huh. to just be, you know, to keep it simple, not feel like we have to do too much. You know, right now it's kind of cool because it's like you're not forced to have to be around anybody. So, you know, you social distancing is all cool. Right. You know, you don't have to be in that cubicle if you don't want to. You know, you don't. You just don't have to interact in the same way. Um, yeah. And I, and I, I miss that to a certain extent, like that human, you know, interaction. But I mean, with technology, we're still, you know, making it happen, right? Yes, but exactly. It's, just, it's getting back to those basics, and I feel like that was also something that I tried to bring to Dre's character because. Listen, when they when they give you kind of like a little breakdown as to who the character is, mm -hmm. they're not giving you every single detail. It's kind of like, okay, she's um, this type of person. She grew up in the South Side of Chicago. Um, that's it. So, so it's up to you to kind of put together whatever kind of backstory there is. Because like you said, there's a season one, season two, Dre is nowhere to be found. And then season three, it's like, who the hell? You know, where, <laughs> where did you come from? And Nina had, she was in a relationship with another individual, you know, prior to me. There was another um, young lady who she was involved with. The character's name was Karen. Uh, forgive me, I don't yeah. know the actress's name. But mm -hmm. so we saw her in season one and season two. But I think the, the fans, the supporters didn't really understand, I think, what their relationship was. I don't know if it was made as clear as, as it has been made, you know, within this season. You right. know, you can't not be clear. There got to be some type women. of connection, though. You know what I mean? Between each individual that's working together. You got to be on some type of wave frequency for it to come off natural on the screen, Most right? Definitely. That's Most not definitely. my lane, but I'm just, yeah. with my perception. No, but no, you're absolutely right. And no, the, the viewers are extremely important. You know, I come from a theater background. And so mm. we can rehearse a whole show. We can have a whole show ready to go. Lines memorized, verbatim. If we don't have an audience, then none of it matters. We don't do it yeah, for ourselves. Yeah, I don't, don't. Right. We do it for these viewers. So every <laughs> single issue that the shy talks about from um, black love to transgender, you know, to same sex, in, you know, couples, to dementia, to Alzheimer's, to death, to, you know, it matters. Love, wedding, family. Consummation. <laughs> Struggle. <Exactly>. Struggle, <laughs> you know, and then, and then being Struggle able to real. overcome that. Over. Teen mm -hmm. pregnancy. I mean, we're we hit on so many. Well, the writers, you know, I want to say we hit on so on. many different. Yeah, so we and it's, we it's needed that, your character. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I'm so glad that she was introduced. But yeah, I think like um, I think Dre really tried to be like the voice of reason. You know, I think so. You know, some of the fans didn't necessarily like the way she came off at certain scenes. Like maybe they thought she was too pushy. But I'm from Philly. You know, you have to be blunt and frank to get what you need. And so when I found out who she was, I was like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. Southside Chicago, she can't be a pushover. She has to be an individual, you know, like I got family in Chicago. My mom lives in Chicago. So I, I, I know what those stomping grounds are like. And I, even though I wasn't raised there, I was raised in Philadelphia, impoverished. You understand. It's, it's, they call it Philadelphia. You know, like it, it's, it's tough. And so... 
like even with this the one scene um where i'm i'm telling um well not telling but i'm suggesting to nina <laughs> to maybe we pack up the items and i know <laughs> i got like a lot of backlash for that because people were like wait what you doing Dre? Why, you why are you and, telling that yeah I, yeah i think i think with that again trying to be the voice of reason and saying listen um, I'm, I'm not really sure what has happened ultimately. However, it's been two months. Growing up in the hood, if you've been missing for two weeks, that was two it. days, chances are, unfortunately, you're probably you're gone. a goner. And That's I, and true. I said plenty of times, I'm like, listen, I, I've been fighting for Keisha from day one when, when I first right. go down to the tent city and I'm out yeah. with the base, like, in fact, you know... <laughs> Gangster to go with base, you know, like yeah, I have a gun, but but I I was I felt like I could do this, you know. And you was under the bridge with the homeless; they could have tagged you. That's what I'm you saying. Ain't from, like, you ain't from. You ain't over there. No, that's not my stomping grounds. <laughs> but, but I right. like that that's the lengths that Dre is willing to go. This is not even my my blood, my seed. This, you know what I mean? But it's my mm -hmm. partner, and so. I feel like I'm not even married, but it provided that that happens, it's like, oh, you got to be a ride or die. I don't want to die. Wow, right. <laughs> <laughs> and you got that survival, we're going to thrive while we survive and kind of mentality. Like, we're going to get through this, but we can't get through this doing that, though. No, and also, too, <laughs> it's like you're in this bedroom. You're extremely sad and depressed. Kevin is being neglected in this other room. I mean, I'm being neglected, but you can push me to the side. You know, it's, it's right. more so about about Kevin. And mm -hmm. Kevin has already experienced some trauma on his own. Like, he needs us as his parents. Their father mm -hmm. passes away in season two. You understand? So I'm coming. And they didn't have no good relationship. They didn't, apparently, they didn't he have He was a little rocky. Right. Yeah. And so we had um, Jason's character who, you know, was, was uh, I think his name was Brandon in the show, but basically they had that character who was kind of stepping in, like, as a father figure. Well, now we don't have right. that father figure. Now, is Dre stepping up as a father figure? Absolutely not. She's a grown woman. She stands firmly yeah. in that. However, <laughs> however, Lena, I mean, I said Lena, Nina, we got a co-lead <laughs> right now. We got a kind of co-parent with this, with this situation and work together. Right. And so, mm -hmm. to me, it was just really beautiful, again, to just show all of these examples of Black love. And, oh, my God. Like, I don't want to give away any spoilers. Have you seen the finale? Yes, I watched it. Okay, perfect. I watched it. So, the, the mm -hmm. montage that happens at the end, just with, like, all the couples and how they're, they're saying, like, listen, we've all been through some We're, things. <laughs> Infidelity. Stay, right. Yeah, all, all of it. But, like you're saying, yes, as a community... We stand together. We're going to mm -hmm. work on our families. We're going to work on the issues that we had. We're going to get this therapy. Hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do you this. Know? We're going to make them appointments. <laughs> and we're going to make these appointments, and we got to get back to making this money. Because at the top, you know, the first couple, first couple episodes, Dre came in with gold that is and so money funny. and everything. And then, and then <laughs> once the problems started happening, that you never saw, you never saw any of that. <laughs> and it was just like... Who can get your hair done at a time like this? Your child is, you know, missing. Who can go and get your nail? You know, like, I, mm -mm. everybody was going through it. You know, everybody was going through it. So, but yeah. Dang, yeah, that's so dope. I know. I'm just going to take a minute just to say hello to everybody. I really appreciate oh, yes, everyone, please. you know, chiming in, right? No, right? Hey. And sometimes you can get to the conversation and then it's like, you can zone that out. Now I get why yes. a couple of people do that. I'm like, how did you, you know do that? Because I, I was so excited with time. Like, oh my gosh, look at all these people out right here. That's amazing. It's beautiful. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. And thank you to everybody who has just been watching the show and tuning in, you know, yeah. checking out my music. It's just been, it's just been love. And I just, um, I look forward to continuing to tell, you know, black stories and, and, and being a part of a culture where representation matters. And we're demanding that. You know, it's just like, we're not going to go, we're not going to be looked over. You know what I mean? We're not going to go uh -huh. unseen like the Invisible Man. It's not happening. We're here. You understand? See, you know. You're <laughs> we're not going nowhere. Right. right. Not, that brings me to this. Exactly. <laughs> that brings me to this. I had saved okay. this quote just for you because I thought this was an amazing, beautiful quote. I was going to start with it, but we just got right into it. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to read it now. Don't hide your brilliance. 
or you will not create change. Refuse to suppress your passion or it will perish. Never stop believing in yourself or you will no longer exist. Speak it, share it, do it. Be who you desire, Mor- Morales Scott. She is so beautiful and so amazing. That's she beautiful. posts posts every day. And I read That's this one. I said, oh, I'm going to share this with Miss Robin Hood. I'm, I'm going to music because that's, that's dope. <laughs> you know, like, that's it's so dope. crazy. Like, I know a lot of people have been like, well, wait a second. You know, what's her name? But it's like, listen, I'm a hyphenated artist. You know, yes, my government is Miriam A. Hyman. I am an actress yes. first and foremost. I have fallen in love with music. I am a hip hop MC as well. I'm a lyricist. I write bars, and I go yeah, by Robin Hood with a Y. <laughs> so, you know, I'm I'm just I'm just doing me. You feel me? Like, <laughs> you are not hiding your brilliance, and I want and that's the point of these conversations that I want. I don't want people to fold during this time. I want people to literally take this crisis and use it for creativity. Take this time to uh, heal if they have to. Maybe they're not even in the space to create, but at least be in that moment to heal. Because if you heal, now that when you get to that level of creating, now it can like blossom into something that you never thought it can blossom into. Because oh, now you're freed of all of the baggage and the luggage yeah. and the yeah. naysayers and all of that stuff you go through. You right. know what I'm saying? As you yeah. grow, oh, as you're going through, and yeah. that is so amazing. So when I read that, I was like. She does that because you write too. Like you're a writer, a lyricist, an yeah. actor. You have literally embodied your whole being of gifts. I was oh. looking, not that I'm a stalker or anything like that. Ah. But one, one of your posts, Lena Wave had posted and she said in your comments that you are a gift. And I said, oh, my God, I can't wait till tomorrow because this is going to be so amazing because I get to unwrap this gift and I get to share it with the platform out here because we're sharing our platform so we get to write. That's what the young people do. Hey. So I was like, I get to unwrap this gift. And she said that. That's, That's big because a lot of times people don't even realize that we're all gifted. They just don't even know how to unwrap it. It's just like leaving your Christmas tree up with a bunch of gifts and it's January 25th. Yeah, What's the yeah, point, yeah. right? What are we right, doing here? Right. We're just letting it collect dust. We're just, time's a wasting. I was listening time's to Erica working. Badu earlier and I was like, would you tell these people that again? Time's <gasps> a wasting. Like, we cannot it's, talk it's, about, we can't keep talking about the problem. We got to start, you know, emotion. And that's what no, your music real. do. That's it's what real. your music it's do. So it's so like, real. look, I see. This is going on. Hey, Alvin. We gotta say, Alvin Smith, we have a mutual friend. Hey. He's so amazing. <laughs> Alvin Smith is so beautiful. Like, he really supports and loves. Like, I, I just That's love it. Like, and he shares his family on this page. That is so beautiful. <laughs> he is amazing. And also, June Archer. I was looking at something and yes. it was passing down my time. Like, that yes. is my brother. Yeah, okay? I just did um, an interview with June. He's such a dope dude. Like, I, it was just great. What? Yeah. When I first met him years ago, when I first started, before I even knew I was a publicist, yeah. that guy was like, here, take my number. We had talked oh, on the phone a little while. He was like, if you need anything, Slim, that's yeah. what they was calling me in music. Look, you need anything, Slim, I got you. Slim, so I really? Shut up. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, and so he was like, whatever you need. And I, you know, he came up with this 100 uh, Black Men Awards. He was like, you know, I got the women too. I was like, I know, but I've never seen 100 successful Black men all in one place. Right. Like, right. this is amazing. You're giving them awards for their community and their service. He's just amazing a person all the way around. Yeah. And when I seen yeah. it, I was like, Shut up, I get to talk to her too. I was talking to the yeah. screen on Instagram yeah. when I seen the post. I was like, that she dope then because she's talking to my brother. Like, oh yes, yes. this is yes. absolutely yeah, this he is was amazing. Super cool. Yeah, and I got connected with him through another, you know, mutual friend. And so it's that kind of thing where I always say to people, you know, it's about who you know and then what you know. Who absolutely. you know will get you in the door, and once you get in the door, then it's up to you to show what you know. It's, it, I feel like it's, it's as simple as that, you know, so it was just great because when she connected me with him, she knew like, okay, obviously, 
she would like to be in this medium with him and he's a great person to talk to and he's you know, a like great said, person not, not, not an interview but just a conversation you know where you just feel like you talking with your, one of your cousins you know you just that is my point exactly because a lot of these conversations a couple of them are on here now davion bots amazing producer from texas he's like Dope. the producers are gonna be on you because Let's i've been pr for go. producers okay <laughs> we got sky's music that's my dude there he's an amazing producer he's produced with so many people i'm not even going to put down the discography because it's just we don't even have that kind of time but he's dope like i work with some dope producers like that i just feel like they're creators of the universe there's they put out that frequency and that sound right they really are and like my homeboy isto he produced every track on the ep so the beautiful thing to me is like we had this conversation Mm -hmm. between you know um well there's two conversations that are happening basically you know i play the voice of this individual called mr i don't care of screw you records so i'm a voiceover right. artist as well so i did all the voices on the ep <laughs> you're creator so, you know <laughs> and so um and i was doing this all during quarantine fin- finishing up the ep i was so motivated because we were shut down and locked down it was like what do i do i gotta do something you know <laughs> um but basically you know he said to me he's like listen what are you thinking about in terms of like the EP? What, how do you want it to have evolved from the first two, you know, uh, that you've yeah. done? And I dropped the most recent one in February. So I'm like, okay, how do I, how do I freak this? And it, you know, comes out totally different. So uh-huh. basically I said, you know what? I've had a lot of conversations with record label execs, uh, managers, producers, and they've all said the same thing. Look, you're extremely talented. We love what you do. However, there's always a however. It's, on them. Um, it's, a little, <laughs> it's a little too conscious. It's a little too much for, you know, the people. It's a little too much robbing for the hood, you know. And so right. what, what we need to do in order for you to sell, and you will sell, but you're going to have to kind of sell out a little bit, you know. And so I wanted to have these conversations be very exaggerated. And so it's, it's more, a little bit more extreme, but you see just within these, like, little innocent conversations, of which they seem innocent, how we're just missing each other. You know, this is a white man, you know what I mean? It's an older white man dealing with a younger black woman. And so it, we're not on the same page, unfortunately. At all, so right. I get thrown all of these obstacles. And I'm like, okay, look, I go back to what I know. I'm a talented individual. I can make this work. So mm-hmm. Easto is the one who I go to. I need that beat because it fuels <laughs> me. So every time I'm like, East, you got something for me, baby? Like, look, you know. Let me get that. <laughs> Let me get that. And so, you know, even within the tracks, you know, we just wanted to highlight him at the top, you know, just to make sure that, again, it goes back to that, like, that, like, uh, just those relationships that those, you know, those MCs used They're to have. They're so with important. Their yeah, or like, you know, just like a, like a Jada Kiss and a Swiss Beats, you know, like that, where it was Ooh. like, wow, when y'all in here making this together, you know, and so that's the relationship that I have with East Doe, and so. I wanted every single conversation to perceive the song so that the songs would be motivated by that. He produced every track. He's new, up and coming. I mean, dope, 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 dude. Get to know Eso, you know. I have listening yeah. to the EP. You get yeah. to know some a lot of times you get to know a person's art before you actually get to know who that person is in yeah. real life. Exactly. Just like with your character. Like, I connected with your character so much that I was like, I got to reach out and find out who her people's oh. is. Right? Oh. I don't feel like, I honestly, I tell people, I don't feel like nobody is off limits. In my mind, my superpower is I'm a connector. I connect the dots. You got to be. Right? I mean, we, have, we have to network in this business. And I know a lot of artists are, you know, they kind of, they shy away from that. But like I said, who you know, what you know. You know, you get to meet new people. Like, I've had a lovely time just, you know, kicking Me it too. with you. <laughs> and it's just it's just a blessing because if you don't reach out, if, if my folks oh, yeah, can't look at your, you know, body of work and say, hey, you know, Miriam, <laughs> I think we should, you know, this might be like a nice look, um, then I, then it will never happen, you know? So Right. I'm just, exactly. I'm so I... Yeah. I'm super I, I don't know. I just think that this has been definitely, I'm grateful for it. This has been an amazing 30 minutes. I didn't have, I don't, 
I don't come with a long list of questions or anything like that. I just want to sometimes just let the conversation flow to wherever it needed to flow because somebody needed whatever it is that we said over these 30 Most minutes. Definitely. And I needed it too because yeah, I, like I guarantee mine. you, we're about to get off. I'm probably going to be thinking of something else that I could do or, oh, I can write this. Or, oh, yeah. that would be dope. Right. Yeah, well, so I, I appreciate gotta, it. You know, catch up again and have a no, little definitely. chit chat. And, Definitely, um, we got to do that. Yeah, just thank you to everybody. We got to do the part today. two. I'm sure more music is going to be coming. I Ooh, mean, that... come on, you already know. I'm literally in the lab. You can't see me, but I'm in my studio. So okay, so <laughs> you you can't see you can't see my speakers and my mics and the panel. This is just the blue screen. That's all you get. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, <laughs> trust and believe. This is a screen. This is my little screen too. Like somebody exactly. was like, put the mask on. You the, the well, Corona. Okay. I was like, I'm at home. Like I just posted this on the wall because people be all in your background. Like, what's your couch all looking like? All up in the background. <laughs> Um, all up in the yeah. scenes but yeah this is this is it so i don't know if you want to say where people can what they, we can look forward to i know that this is the end yeah oh yeah, my god no it's worries. so fast go ahead yeah. i mean you know of course people can still binge watch the shy you know just go get that showtime app or if you have sling or you know whatever you can just add on um but yeah. it's been an incredible season thank you to everybody who's been tuning in and mm. also you know <laughs> check out that alter ego ep uh, the link Where is that? It's in, it's, the link is in your bio. The link okay. is in my bio, you know, but it's on pla all platforms and everything. And then um, lastly, I just wanted to shout out BAMFI, the Black and Missing Foundation, um, nice. which really just, just goes to kind of what we were talking about within the show, you know, with Burgundy, her character, Keisha, had gone, you know, going missing. And so how, you know, that's really affecting mm. our communities globally. And so this particular foundation, you know, just goes to um, show that there are still people that are out there that are trying to locate and find these brown and you know, uh, black folks that are, yeah, because it's 40% of people that are missing are brown and black, you know what I mean? Wow. So it's, it's, you know, you can, the, the website, you know, it's right there, vampire.org. Okay, um, boom, get it, get it on yeah, his t-shirt. You, you can check them out, you know, of course they accept donations, but I think more importantly, it's just awareness, it's being aware that this is something that's happening in all of our communities. And we just got to, we got to wake up as a community. You know, we can't just disappearing. Yeah, and people, folks are disappearing. It's a real thing. And it could be right in your, you know, your backyard. We got the sex trafficking. And people probably crazy. don't even notice it, though. I mean, that's a exactly. whole other conversation. But people probably don't even notice it because people don't even know who their neighbors are anymore. That's gone. But, yeah, we got to go. <laughs> okay. I know we, it's time. It's just so dope. But, yeah. So, yeah, so that's a really good thing. I mean, I'm sure that a lot of people are going and not people even noticing that. So that's the beautiful foundation. We're freezing. We're okay. <laughs> oh, no, it's time. Let's definitely chat again. Yes. I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody tuning in. God bless. Stay safe. Yes, me Let's too. Love, light, and energy. I, I receive Peace. that. Peace. <laughs> All right. <laughs> bye. <laughs>